Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to recreate this glowing background gradient effect that you can see here with the intensified effect as we hover over the button. Let's get right into it. All right, so when looking at an effect like this, you could be tempted to think that since the glow is following the edge of the button, we would need to use a drop shadow to achieve this. As I'll show you in this video, there are other ways to achieve this and actually thinking about shadows here is not necessarily the right thing to do. Shadow utilities in Tailwind are not just about creating separation, they're a carefully crafted hierarchy of elevation levels. The first one looks like it's right against the background, the second one has a little bit of elevation, the next one a bit more, etc. And so using this hierarchy properly lets you bring more or less attention to different elements throughout your design. Looking back at this button, there's no real uh, elevation concept whatsoever. It's more about giving the background a glowing effect to give attention to this button in a different way. Okay, so I'll show you how you can achieve that effect with Tailwind Utilities, and we're not going to use box shadows, but instead we're going to use a blur filter. Here we're going to create our button, and we're gonna start with a few classes. We're gonna have some padding horizontal of seven. For the padding vertical, I'll go with four. We'll have a background of black. We'll want some rounded corners, maybe rounded LG. And we're going to reduce the line height of the text within the button with leading none. Finally, because we have multiple bits of text within this button, we're going to add a flex container and align the items vertically with items center. Inside this button, we'll have two span elements. The first one will have a color of text gray 100 labs release and we're gonna go with 2021.09 20, because we're in September now and we'll have a second span I'll duplicate it the text here will be indigo 400 and it will say see what's new and we want to write our row with at rar rar Okay, let's save and have a look at what we've got so far. And here you'd be tempted to use a spacing utility with space x5. Uh, but in our case, we want this little separator here. So instead, we're going to use a divide utility, divide x. And the color is going to be divide gray 600. And you can use divide and spacing utilities together. So we need to apply the spacing inside. So here we're going to go padding right six for the first one. And the second one will have padding left of six. All right, let's add a logo here. And we're not going to use this logo, but we're gonna go grab a heroic on icon. So because we're talking about labs releases, I'm going to search for a beaker here, which is nice. I'll copy that SVG. And we're going to wrap our first element here in another span, which is going to be a flex container. So flex and items center and this time we're going to use a spacing utility with space x5 and so let's move the closing one here and i will come and paste my svg inside of that flex container it already has the height and width that i want but we need to change the color to let's go text pink 600 nice and bright and i will also rotate it a little bit with minus rotate 6 all right, so that's our button done. So now we can tackle the interesting part. So we're gonna try and recreate this nice glowing effect now using, like I mentioned, a blur filter. Okay, so the trick here is we want to create another shape that is exactly the same dimensions as the button and place it behind and then we can apply this blur. We have a button here and we're going to wrap it in a div with a position of relative. So let me move that down to the closing of the button. And that relative container here allows me now to create an absolutely positioned element with absolute. And we're gonna go with inset zero and also a background of pink 600, just like our logo. And let's also add the rounded corners with rounded LG. So now this shape sits exactly on top of our button. Now, because we want our button to actually be on top, we need to set it to something else than position static. So we're gonna go with relative here and it should bring the button back on top. Nice. All right, let's come back up here and make the background actually black. And here's the cool thing. Now we're going to come here and apply a blur utility to our element that's behind the button. So blur. 
And look at this, that's pretty cool. So this is only one type of blur. You can go with blur extra large for a much bigger effect or blur small. And you can also play with different parameters. For example, I can change the inset zero to be minus inset one. So the blur is going to be a bit more outside of the button. Let's look at inset three to exaggerate the effect. And I think here 0 0.5 is actually a nice sweet spot. And one more thing you can play with is the opacity of this element. So opacity, and if I go with 50, you can see it's a bit weaker. And here we're gonna go with 75. Now let's change this pink background to be a gradient. So I'll go BG gradient to right. And we're going to go from pink 600 and we wanna go to purple 600. All right, so that's starting to look really cool. Uh, let's compare this button with the actual button we were looking at. So you can see a, a nice addition here is on hover, not only the text here changes color, but also the background becomes a little bit more intense when you come in and then it goes away when you go out. Because we want to hover on the entire button and change things on the text and the elements behind, we need to use group hover here. So we're gonna take our relative element here and add a group class. Let me close the SVG so we see clearer. So one of the elements is the text here, group hover. We want the text to become like the other text, which is text gray 100. And we'll also add a transition and a duration of 200 milliseconds. The other element that we want to uh, change on hover is this one. And here on group hover, once again, we want to change the opacity to be 100. Once again, we want a transition and a duration of 200 milliseconds. Let's look at it. All right, so on this button, when I hover in on the button, the glow and the text come in at about 200 milliseconds. But when I hover out, the glow takes a little bit longer to move out. So let's change this to 1000 milliseconds. And this is the time we want when we leave the element. So you can see now it's fading out much slower, but we still want for the background to come in 200 milliseconds. So here I can go group hover duration 200. So now when we hover over the group, it's going to take 200 milliseconds. And when we leave, it's going to use the 1000. Zoop. Pew. All right, so that's, in my opinion, a really good way to achieve this background glow effect. Remember, we're not trying to create a level of elevation here, and it gives you the freedom to use any color, gradients, etc., as you please. And I wanna leave you with a little bonus final touch that brings a little bit more delight. If we look at the current button, you can see that the background gradient has this also oh subtle tilting animation from left to right really slowly. So just for fun to wrap it up here, let's create a custom animation that does the same. In the Tailwind config file, we're going to extend the keyframes object. And we also extend the animation object. And we're going to create a tilt animation class, which is going to use our tilt keyframes. So check this out. Now we have a new animate tilt class. The effect is exaggerated to five degrees, but you can see the background glow is tilting from left to right really slowly. But let's come back in our keyframes and we'll go back from one degree to minus one degree. And with that done, that about wraps it up for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.